Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I said I'll just stick to my webcam instead of my HD digital camera for this final review of the Jurassic Park series because I figured, you know, why not? And, oh boy, sad to say, this was the worst of the series because as much as I love the original film, as well as the second one and of course Jurassic World I'm going to review the film as Ian Malcolm had once said that is one big pile of shit yes and I'm talking about the third movie of the series Jurassic Park 3 oh, how much I can't stand this sequel so much that I was a bit surprised at how fucking short this movie was. And how utterly fucking boring it is. Everything from the characters to the ridiculous uh, scenes that they went into. Oh man, I mean, I just feel like I wasted my whole entire 92 minutes that I'll just never get back. And it's sad, really, because I really wanted to like this sequel. I really did. I mean, maybe it would have been a little better than the second one. But, I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't even work. Not even as a Jurassic Park sequel. It just felt like I'm watching a generic version of it. And it's just, I don't know. Well... Before I get to that review, I actually forgot to mention uh, on the previous two uh, Jurassic Park reviews that I just did, I actually uh, did actually got some uh, merchandising from the movie before. You know, I, I actually did used to have the Lost World Jurassic Park watch that I got at Burger King back in 1997. I don't know whatever happened to that watch, but. I think I might have either lost it or I might have put it somewhere safe. Uh, I don't know. Um, but it was a very cool watch that it had. It was basically a dinosaur. At this rate, the, the T-Rex version of the watch. They had several other ones that they got. But the one I got was the T-Rex kind. and It had the, uh, the hologram that whenever you look on your watch, you actually can see the eye of the, the T-Rex. I thought that was really cool and awesome. But I think you can get that on eBay if you ever get a chance. And not to mention, I did used to have um, that Dino Cup that I got at Universal Studios Hollywood when we went to the Jurassic Park The Ride. I, w I remember going to that restaurant that they have um, in the mix with, with the ride. So you can actually get all these Dino Cups that has the, the giant head of the T-Rex. So... <laughs> That was really awesome, yeah. Unfortunately, I I think I lost that one too. It's such a shame. Well, but, hey, it, it was cool. But let's just get back to this terrible movie that I just want to rip it apart completely. Just like the T-Rex would. So anyway, it stars Sam Neill who's back as Dr. Alan Grant with William H. Macy, Taya Leone, Alexandra Nivlia, who went on to do the film Junebug, Trevor Morgan, who was in that terrible Barney's Great Adventure. Yes, and this is where we get the cameo later in the film, which I'm going to mention. Not only that, he also went on to do that film called Uncle Nino, which has Joe Mantegna along with his daughter Gia Mantegna and, or Gina as, as they like to refer to and Ann Archer yeah, Michael Jeter God bless his soul he was a great actor he was in movies uh, such as uh, The Fisher King and all these other films that he's been in yeah even Air Bud he was also in the TV show uh, Evening Shade with Burt Reynolds and of course he played Mr. Noodle on Sesame Street which is part of the segment uh, Elmo's World yeah 
Yeah, God bless his soul. He, he was such a great actor. He passed away in 2003. Yeah, Laura Dern, Buse Young, Taylor Nichols, yeah. with Mark Herilic, Julio Oscar Rochosos, Sarah Daniel Madison, and Linda Park. It's written by Peter Buckman, Alexander Payne, yes, the same guy who gave us election, sideways, even the, the movie Nebraska and the Descendants, and Jim Taylor, and it's directed by Joe Johnson, the same guy who, uh, who gave us great movies such as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, The Rocketeer, as well as Jumanji and Captain America, the first Avenger. The movie begins somewhere around the island of Isla Sonar. We meet two Tauruses, Ben Hildebrand, who is played by Mark Harelic, and Eric Kirby, who happens to be the son of two harbor owners, Paul and Amanda Kirby, who are played by William H. Macy and uh, Teo Leone. Yep. And Eric Kirby, of course, is played by Trevor Morgan. They decided to go parasailing until suddenly a creature of unknown species attacks and kills a boat crew as it passes through a fog bank. So Ben uncouples the line with Eric bounding with him as they go sailing into the wilderness. But meanwhile, Dr. Alan Grant, who's played by Sam Neill, who's now divorced, with his wife Ailey Sadler, who is played by Laura Dern, had became very famous for the result of the events of Jurassic Park. Sadler is now married to a man named Mark and has two children. While Grant is discussing with Sadler of how the raptors are far more intelligent than they have ever had believed by having a complex social structure and hunting patterns. So one afternoon, at the Dick site, Grant's assistant Billy Brennan, who is played by Alexandro Niblia, shows how he can use a 3D printer to replicate the larynx of a Velociraptor. So then we meet the wealthy couple, you know, Paul and Amanda. They arrived and offered Grant funding for his research if they willing to give them an aerial tour of the Isla Sonar. But desperate for the research support, Grant had reluctantly agreed and decided to fly along with them and the Kirby's mercenaries associates, Adesky, Cooper, and the pilot Nash, all played by Michael Jeter, John Deal, and Bruce A. Young. So on the plane, yeah, while well, Grant actually fell asleep as we speak, trying to get to uh, Isla Sonar, this is where we get to see that scene, and a very stupid scene at that, where he dreamed that that no one is actually on control of the plane, and then right next to him we see a dinosaur actually screaming, or this rate, in Billy's voice. He says, Ellen! Yeah, and then he, and he, then he got woken up by Billy. <laughs> oh my god. You can tell how bad the CGI looked in this scene. Yeah, of the dinosaur. That was so messed up. But that's when uh, they found out once they were trying to land into Isla Sonar. Yeah, then he started screaming and yelling at them that that they cannot land there because they knew what was going to happen next. That the dinosaur might attack them. And he, he did predict it too. But suddenly he got knocked unconscious by Cooper and was waking up from the sound of Amanda using a bullhorn. This actually attracts a Spinosaurus which killed Cooper first and causing the plane to crash into some trees. Yep, and then the Spinosaurus winds up uh, killing Nash and destroys the plane you know, as it rolls around into the island. So the survivors have fleed managed to briefly lose the Spinosaurus only to encounter a Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
who wants a fighting with the Spinosaurus, while the group escapes as they, as both of them had started fighting with each other, and and yep, the Spinosaurus actually kills the T Rex. Unbelievable! I I just not, I just could not believe that this had to happen because how could a Spinosaurus like this can kill the T Rex? See. It just proves how bad the writing really is. I don't know. I mean, mostly because the Spinosaurus is, is even bigger now than the T-Rex. Oh, but, it, I don't know. It, this movie just... It's so stupid. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, Grant had learned that the Kirbys were, of course, a, a middle-class divorce couple. You know, trying to look for their son, Eric, and Amanda's boyfriend, Ben. Which makes a lot of fur further exploitations leading them to find the parasail a tangled in the tree where we then found Ben's decomposing body. Yeah, because he's now a skeleton already that's already being attached to it. Yep, really messed up scene. Yeah, hard to believe that he became one. So, anyway, the group encounters Rector's nest with eggs as they flee by taking the parasail with them. They found an abandoned in gen compound which Amanda's being ambushed by the raptor yeah hard to believe because this was a scene where when they went inside there in the center we basically spotted the raptor actually uh, pretending that he was actually inside one of those glass uh, drugs but nope they just throw that in just for a, a jump scare <laughs> unbelievable and then they, they try to escape completely while we actually saw the raptors. Oh, wow. You wouldn't believe this, but they actually started communicating with each other by actually yelling, Help! 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 Definitely like that. Uh, <laughs> so, this whole thing is so stupid. So, the group managed to trap it, but they escape once they contact the rest of its pack. So, during the ensuring chase, the group feeds into a herd of kind of Forsaurus and the Persophophus, which, is, which causes a complete stampede, sort of borrowing elements from the first movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, they had to separate Grand and Udesky from the others. But Grant retrieves Billy's Sechel while uh, Udesky is ruined by the raptors. Amanda, Paul, and Billy tries to help Udesky as they realize that this was a trap set by the raptors, which definitely killed Udesky. Yeah, and that was. that really sucks that that had to happen. So then Grant suspects the raptors are searching for something while observing the two of them communicating. Yeah, which I actually did mention earlier that they were communicating with each other. He then ambushed and corners by the raptors, but was rescued by Eric, who actually managed to survive in an overturned supply truck filled with engine products. Yeah, because he was even dressed up as simply as an engine scientist, and he discovers all the equipment that they had inside. Yeah, this is where they started making conversations with each other. And once they found them, and, and then um, they were talking about that Ian Malcolm wrote a book, and they thought that, yeah, I never thought he would say this, but he thought it was, yeah, it's chaotic, but very preachy. Yeah, I never thought that Eric would actually say the word preachy and chaotic in, in the same sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wonder this guy's born as a brick. Anyway. The next day, Grant and Eric had heard Paul's phone ringing. Yep, that's where we get to hear the Nokia ringtone. At this rate, a satellite phone that's, as we heard earlier in the film, while Yudesky and, and the rest of the crew were just getting everything set up from, from the plane. Yeah, you started hearing that goddamn Nokia phone. And by the way, I did use a Nokia cell phone that was a blue one, a small blue one. But I don't have that anymore because now I have the, the iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I had that back in 2003, you know, when I was in college. Go figure. It was very annoying. 
So once Eric and, and Grant had uh, heard uh, Paul's phone ringing, they are reunited with the Kirby's and Billy. As Paul explains that he actually gave the phone to Nash before he was eaten. But that's when we spotted the Spinosaurus once again. While the ringtone was playing as if the phone was actually inside of him. Wow. I mean, they really want to come up with with uh, stupid jokes like that. You know, just so the audience could laugh. <laughs> oh my god. Because that's where we're going to lead to the next scene. So once they barely escaped, Grant had discovered that Billy had suddenly took two eggs from the raptor's nest and hid them inside his satchel that's used for funding. Yeah, so that means he's actually going to sell the two eggs, you know, just so he, he can become rich or so. Unbelievable. Because that alone would provoke the raptor's attacks. So he decided to keep the eggs to ensure the group's survival. So once the group then enters the large aviary to use the house for the paradons, some which actually of course attacks the groups and fly away with Eric as we speak, Billy tries to rescue Eric by using Ben's parasol, but suddenly was attacked and, it, and apparently was killed by, by one of the paradons or what seems to be. So the rest of the groups escapes the Avery, leaving the doors unlocked in their panic. They make way down the river using a small boat and encounter several herbivores, dinosaurs on the riverside. But that particular night, the group had heard the phone ringing. That's, oh, you're going to love this. A small pile of shit. Yep. That, that was taken directly from a Spinosaurus. Yep, and they actually take uh, the phone out of there. Oh boy, see, they really did copy most of the elements from the first movie, and I just cannot believe it. It's just so disgusting. So as the rain falls, Grant tries to contact Sadler, but of course the Spinosaurus winds up attacking the boat. Once Grant and Paul scare it off for good by setting the boat fuel on fire. Yeah, that's when the, this was the scene where once uh, Grant tries to contact Sadler, you know, we get to see uh, their baby son who was trying to grab the phone in order to get the phone to uh, to uh, Sadler. But of course, you know, he was actually watching. Oh, you're going to love this. A 30 second clip of Barney the Dinosaur. Oh, wow. I can't believe the filmmakers thought this would be a good idea to show Barney the Dinosaur. Yeah, just to know that that the actor Trevor Morgan was in Barney's Great Adventure. Oh, wow. I mean, just fucking wow. I mean, did they, did they really have to go for that? Seriously? Unbelievable. Anyway. So the next day, the group makes their way towards the shoreline, already being surrounded by the raptors again. And Grant had Amanda surrender the A's because they thought that she stole it by then using the 3D printer raptors Larnex to confuse the pack. So they run off with the eggs. The group had freed the coast and find that Sadler had called in the US Marine Corps and the US Navy to rescue them. So they discovered that Billy was already seriously injured and he's alive. As they leave the island, they see the Paradons flying free as Grandma muses they are looking for new nesting grounds. And then the movie ends. And oh god, I mean, just fucking wow. I, I mean, not only is this one of the worst Jurassic Park sequels of all time, but it's also utterly boring, bland, totally cliche, and definitely a waste of time. Filled with lousy CGI that I cannot believe it was done once again by the Stan Winston Studio along with OLM I, I'm, I'm just amazed because they teamed up together for the first two films and the CGI looks so much better than that they look so real it's like yeah they, they really did came back to life but here it just looked like something out of a fucking PlayStation 2 video game it doesn't look good at all 
it, it's it's very uninteresting, uninspiring. It, it looks so fucking ugly. They wanted to make it more bigger, faster, and stronger than the dinosaurs that we saw before. It, it just doesn't work. And I didn't like the fact that they had the Spinosaurus attacking the T-Rex. Because to me, that, that was just re totally ridiculous. Because the T-Rex would have just attacked the goddamn thing. It's just sad too, because we had to see the dinosaurs actually doing something completely weird once they tried to attack the group. And it, it just wasn't worth it. Not at all. And it was a shame too, because I can't believe that this movie's running time was a lot shorter than the first two films alone. Yes, even Jurassic World. Because usually a Jurassic Park movie would be, you know, over two hours long. You know, at this rate, two hours and ten minutes for, for its maximum. That's exactly how it should have been in the first place. No, they had to put it to, to simply an hour and 32 minutes filled with a fucking boring story with totally forgettable characters that are not memorable whatsoever. And the fact that, out of all people, Dr. Alan Grant is the only one of the survivors of, of the event that happened at Jurassic Park, as well as all the rest of the other groups at the time, is the only interesting character on the entire fucking movie. And that's sad, really. It really is. And while Ailey Sadler is just giving, like, you know, not enough screen time at all. And it's really sad. I mean, it really is. And, and that really sucks, too, because, I mean, he deserved better than this. He really does. But Sam Neill, of course, once again, is as good as he's ever been when he played Dr. Alan Grant. You know, because he is, of course, the the paleologist as we know it. And he's very smart and intelligent, too. Uh, William H. Macy, though, as uh, Paul, I do like him in the movie. At least he's the only one that I could deal with. I mean, at least he's more smarter than, than the rest of the characters out there, despite the fact that they're trying to look for their son. And, and I know he's, like, saying that their son, Eric, is, is a smart kid and all that. You know, he could take care of himself, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. And I, that's what I'm going to get to that point right there. I thought Trevor Morgan's performance as Eric was as bland and boring as a fucking brick. I, I just did not buy this character at all. It's like they just threw in this stupid smart kid cliche just for... So we get to see his side of, his, of the story of, you know, the fact that he's stuck inside the island, you know, and they're trying to look for him. Yeah, already being trapped by all these dinosaurs around. No, I, I just didn't buy this character a lot. I really don't. I mean, don't get me wrong. Trevor Morgan's not a bad actor. I mean, he's been in better films out there, but I just didn't buy his character at all, uh, like I said. Uh, Teo Leone as Amanda Kirby is even worse. Basically, she spends all of her time just yelling and screaming um, as Eric's mother. You know, it just it was just ridiculous. I, I think she was totally miscast. You know, she's a great actress, but I think she deserves so much better than this. I mean, yeah, I mean, there was even a scene where she was yelling on the megaphone trying to find Eric. And then, of course, you know, there was uh, Grant's assistant, Billy Brennan, who's played by Alexandro Niblio. Uh, I, I never thought that, th that this guy could be as stupid once he stole the two raptors' eggs. Yeah. I know, and the fact that they, they try to make him look like a hunk in this movie is just st stupid in, in so many ways. And, and back to the dinosaurs, I mean, come on, I mean, did I have to see stupid scenes of them actually uh, communicating with each other, you know, by yelling, amp, 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 and, and then, um, and of course, the, that lousy dream sequence that uh, 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> you know, where Gran actually had a, a nightmare and then he spotted the dinosaur, where the dinosaur actually says, Alan! But the good thing about this god awful sequel was that at least I got to hear the Jurassic Park theme once more. Because I never thought I would hear that theme again. And it was really awesome that we get to, that John Williams still has that score. But of course, the music this time is done by Don Davis. So he did the, the score for, for the rest of this lousy sequel. Yeah, just awful. And the fact that Joe Johnson uh, took over for Steven Spielberg, you know, he's not a bad director, though. I mean, it's not his fault, really. I mean, he wanted to make a Jurassic Park sequel this good, you know, as a takeover for Spielberg, so he thought maybe this would be okay. Because he did want to do that in the first place. Just too bad it, it just didn't turn out as good as it, as we expected it to be. And, yeah, I mean, it's... And I, I'm just amazed that even the third movie is the highest grossing film of all. But it's also one of the lowest rating uh, sequels of all time, so... That, that pretty much shows it. Now, I know there are a few people out there that did enjoy the sequel, you know, for what it's worth. Um, that's fine by me. I mean, if you like the sequel, that's okay, but... But for others that really hated this one, and which they all admitted it's one of the weakest of the bunch you know I totally agree with you Jurassic World was without a doubt a much better sequel than this okay that was the real Jurassic Park 3 in my opinion I know it's the fourth installment but nevertheless I'd rather watch that than fucking Jurassic Park 3 again because it's just ridiculous the, the whole movie is as boring bland cliche and all this other crap that went into it just feels like it's just a waste of time I mean don't bother with this movie that's all I can say so anyway I give Jurassic Park 3 one and a half star I'm Joseph A. Saboro and I'll see you later much later bye